Brilliance Audio presents Innocence, a novel by Dean Koontz, performed by McLeod Andrews. On certain nights, beautiful but sad music found its way into my deep windowless rooms. I didn't know from where it came, and I couldn't identify the tune. No lyrics accompanied the melody. But I remained convinced that I had once heard a smoky-voiced chanteuse sing this song. Each time the song came, my mouth moved as if forming the words, but they eluded me. The piece was not a blues number, yet it weighed on the heart as did the blues. I might call it a nocturne, although I believe that a nocturne is always an instrumental. Words existed to this melody. I was certain they did. I should have been able to follow those mellifluous strains to a vent grill or a drain, or to some other route of transmission. But every attempt to seek the source ended in failure. The music seemed to issue from the air, as if passing through a membrane from another unseen world parallel to ours. Perhaps those who lived in the open would have found the idea of an invisible world too fanciful and would have dismissed the notion. Those of us who remain hidden from everyone else, however, know that this world is wondrous and filled with mysteries. We possess no magical perception, no psychic insight. I believe our recognition of reality's complex dimensions is a consequence of our solitude. To live in the city of crowds and traffic and constant noise, to be always striving, to be in the ceaseless competition for money and status and power, perhaps distracted the mind until it could no longer see and forgot the all that is. Or maybe, because of the pace and pressure of that life, sanity depended on blinding oneself to the manifold miracles, astonishments, wonders, and enigmas that comprised the true world. When I said, those of us who remain hidden, I should instead have said, I who am hidden. As far as I was aware, no other like me existed in that metropolis. I had lived alone for a long time. For twelve years, I shared this deep redoubt with father. He died six years earlier. I loved him. I missed him every day. I was now twenty-six, with perhaps a long lonely life ahead of me. Before I arrived, my father lived here with his father, whom I never had the honor of meeting. Most of the furnishings and books were handed down to me from them. One day, perhaps I would pass my belongings to someone who might call me father. We were an enduring dynasty of the dispossessed, living in the secret city that the city's people never saw. My name is Addison. But back then, we needed no names, because we spoke to no one but each other. Sometimes, with a smile, father called himself It. But that wasn't a real name. He called me It's It, or Son of It, which was our little joke. By the standards of humanity, we were exceedingly ugly in a way that excited in them abhorrence and the most terrible rage. Although we were as much human as those who lived in the open, we did not wish to offend, and so we hid ourselves away. Father told me that our kind must not be angry with other men and women merely because of the way that they treated us. They had anxieties we could never understand. He said that we of the hidden had our burdens, but those who lived in the open carried far heavier burdens than ours, which was true. We also remained hidden to avoid worse than persecution. One night, my father was caught in the open. Two frightened, enraged men shot and clubbed him to death. I did not harbor any anger toward them. I pitied them, but I loved them as best I could. We have all been brought into the world for some reason, and we must wonder why and hope to learn. My little windowless residence also served as my school, where I sought to learn, and the most important of those three small rooms was the one lined with mahogany shelves built by my father's father. The shelves were filled with books not wanted by those who lived in the world above. Each of the deep, comfortable armchairs had a padded footstool. 